Hi, I'm Shona. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager at Geoscience Australia. Geoscience Australia brings together experts in Australia's geology and geography. In this series, we're going to explore some of Australia's landscapes and landforms. We're going to learn about some of their features and the processes that shape them. We're also going to think about how landscapes and landforms are valued and the ways humans impact and protect them. In this video, we're going to focus on geomorphological hazards. These are things like earthquakes, tsunamis and volcanoes. Earthquakes shake the ground and can trigger things like tsunamis and landslides. They may also damage buildings and bridges and disrupt electricity, gas and telephone connections. Volcanoes look spectacular and can also cause a lot of damage. They spew hot rocks, gases and lava. Some volcanic eruptions can be explosive and destructive and others create fast flowing lava that may destroy homes, roads and fields. Eruptions can also kill plants, animals and people and even affect the climate. But what causes earthquakes and volcanoes? Why do they occur? To understand that, we need to learn about Earth's tectonic plates. The Earth's outer layer is called the lithosphere, and that includes the crust. And this outer rigid layer is broken into pieces that are moving, and they are what we call the tectonic plates. And those plates, they're made of rock and they form the land and the continents and the oceans sit on top of the tectonic plates as well. Globally, there are about 14 large and about 40 smaller tectonic plates. This is a model that shows the outlines of some of the main large ones. Underneath the plates, there's a layer of partially melted rock that's called the asthenosphere and the plates are continually moving on top of that layer. The tectonic plates move really slowly, but each plate moves in a different direction and at a different speed, so there's different interactions around their edges. So, let's have a look at our tectonic plate. And we can see Australia sitting in the middle, and we've got these edges around here. And one of our close neighbours is this enormous Pacific plate. Now, it looks like a giant mouth, or Pac-Man even, and it's actually moving to the west, so it's coming along and it's not going to eat us. What actually happens is that the crust underneath the ocean slides underneath this bit of crust here and it causes all sorts of things along this edge, like earthquakes. And the same thing's happening here. This bit of crust underneath the ocean is sliding beneath Indonesia. And then if we have a quick look at India, India today is right up in next to Asia, part of Asia, but it used to be way down to the south and it's moved quickly for a tectonic plate all the way north and collided and continues to push up the Himalayan mountain range. As tectonic plates move, the continents that are part of them move with them as well. The tectonic plates have been moving and interacting for billions of years. Today, we're going to use these trays of jelly and pieces of pastry to talk about tectonic plates. This orange jelly here represents the layer of partially melted rock that the tectonic plates sit on. And these pieces of pastry represent the tectonic plates. Most plates have some ocean covering them, and in some places they're thicker and they form land. These ones represent the parts of the plates that are under the ocean. These parts are thinner, but very dense and heavy. And these ones represent the parts of a plate that are land. They're thicker, but made out of less dense rocks. Look how easily they wobble and move on top of the jelly. And like Shona said, sometimes they crash into each other. Look, I created some mountains. This is actually how the Himalayan mountains formed. That's the huge mountain range in Asia that includes the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. That's right, when two tectonic plates both would land on them collide, mountains can form. One plate can also slide under the other, like this. When this happens with oceanic plates, deep ocean trenches form that become the deepest parts of the ocean. And parallel to this, volcanoes may build a chain of islands. 
when an oceanic plate slides under a continental plate, remember, a continental plate is thicker and forms land, a belt of volcanic mountains can form on the land near where the plates collide. Sometimes a continent can be pulled apart by tectonic forces. These forces stretch and thin the continental crust, creating valleys, which eventually fill with water. When the continent finally breaks apart, the two new plates continue to move away from each other, allowing magma to rise up on the water and create new ocean floor. Tectonic plates can also move apart, like this. When this happens below the ocean, magma rises up, cools and becomes new crust. It creates a mid-ocean ridge or underwater volcanic mountain range. Sometimes, tectonic plates can slide horizontally past each other. This movement creates huge stresses in the rock layers, causing them to break and crack, creating fault lines. In the landscape, these fault lines can look like narrow valleys with ranges of narrow mountains on either side. I think Australia is in the middle of a tectonic plate. Do plates have names? I wonder what direction are plates moving in? Yes, Australia is in the middle of the Indo-Australian plate. And this plate is moving northwards about seven centimetres a year with a slight clockwise rotation as well. But what do tectonic plates have to do with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions? Well, tectonic plate movements cause geomorphological hazards like earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanoes. Earthquakes happen when pressure builds up, when plates might push into each other, or pull apart from each other, or slide past each other. Most earthquakes happen along plate boundaries, but they can take place in other locations as well. There are thousands of earthquakes around the world every year. Many of them are too small for people to feel. Did you feel that? Some are so powerful that they are felt hundreds of kilometres away. Grandma, did you feel that? Earthquakes are detected using scientific instruments called seismometers. There are hundreds of seismometers set up around the world to monitor the Earth's movements. I've got a seismometer here, and if I take the case off, we can think about how it works. When the ground shakes, this little arm is moving up and down and creating a signal that's sent to be recorded. Have you heard people use the word magnitude when they're describing an earthquake? Magnitude is the size of an earthquake, and it's a measure of the amount of energy it releases. Seismic information also helps scientists to find out about the location of an earthquake. It also helps them to work out whether an earthquake might trigger a tsunami so that governments and populations can be alerted to the risks and prepare. Volcanoes are also found along the boundaries between tectonic plates. The Ring of Fire is a line that traces the tectonic plate boundaries that occur around the Pacific Ocean. About 75% of the world's volcanoes happen along the Ring of Fire and about 90% of the world's earthquakes happen here too. Most volcanoes are caused by the tectonic plate movements we've talked about. When plates move apart or slide under each other, it may cause magma to rise and erupt through openings in the Earth's crust. This can happen underwater or on land and can form volcanic mountains. Tsunamis are a series of waves caused by a sudden displacement of a large amount of water. This occurs because of a significant underwater earthquake or sometimes a volcanic eruption. These waves can be very large and destructive, but not always. Luckily in Australia, we don't have to worry too much about earthquakes, volcanoes and tsunamis. Why do you think that is? Have a look at the tectonic plates. Okay, we might need to look at these ones. Australia is in the middle of a tectonic plate, so that means it's well away from the boundaries where you get large earthquakes happening and volcanoes. There are no active volcanoes on mainland Australia, but we do have ancient ones. Eruptions over the last few tens of thousands of years in Victoria, South Australia and Queensland were witnessed by First Nations peoples. Even though Australia is in the middle of a tectonic plate, earthquakes can occur, but they're usually small. Have you ever felt the Earth move? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? <laughs>